Hello, I'm Jeremy Vine, and this is Panorama. Tonight, corruption at the heart of world football. The $100 million list. $100 million. Dollars. So many things over such a long period. We reveal the three senior FIFA officials linked to an extraordinary list of secret payments worth around $100 million. Mr. Tashira, did you take your bribes through the Sanod company? And the calls for FIFA to clean up its act once and for all. Far more important than anything else in world football is to get a FIFA that is clean and fit for purpose. In three days' time, we'll find out if England is to host the 2018 World Cup. The bidding process has already been tainted by newspaper allegations about two members of FIFA's executive committee. But we have uncovered fresh evidence of an even bigger corruption story. Panorama has obtained a list of secret payments, bribes, some linked to three more FIFA leaders, men who have the fate of England's World Cup bid in their hands. Andrew Jennings has been investigating the story that FIFA wanted to bury. Spain are the kings of world football. Everybody wants it. They want it. They definitely want it. I believe this is an exceptionally strong, uh, unbeatable bid. There's no doubt we can do it. And a recently deceased octopus predicted we would get it. The England campaign to host the 2018 World Cup has taken two years and had a budget of £15 million. On Thursday, we'll find out if we've won. It's FIFA who decide. They control the world game from this opulent glass palace in Zurich. It's around this table that FIFA's executive committee will make the decision. But they're having to rearrange the chairs. Two of its 24 members will be missing. Amos Sadamu and Reynard Tamari were banned from the vote by FIFA after a newspaper accused them of offering to sell their votes. Our society is full of devils. And these devils, you find them in football. We have to fight that the people, they are in charge of FIFA, they behave as they should do. Trust us. The president of FIFA is Sepp Blatter. As the head of an organization which claims zero tolerance of bribery and corruption, did he say thank you to the media for exposing wrongdoing? No. I'm not pleased about that because this is not uh, very fair, but it gives us the opportunity uh, to clean a little bit whatever has to be cleaned. I'm Andrew Jennings. I've been investigating FIFA for almost a decade. And in previous panoramas, I've tried to get answers from President Blatter. Do you know which football officials took bribes? I don't speak about it. Do, do, do you know which football officials took payments? I don't answer these questions. Asking these questions infuriates President Blatter. I'm the only journalist in the world banned from FIFA's headquarters. Why am I banned from FIFA House? What have I done? No comment. Already they've had to get rid of two of the men voting on England's World Cup bid. Are there others who should be removed from the table? For years I've been gathering evidence about corruption at the highest levels within FIFA. But there was one crucial document I couldn't get hold of. Then, just over a month ago, a trusted source delivered the goods. It's a secret document which some people at FIFA hoped could be kept buried forever. 
line by line, it details 175 secret payments totaling tens of millions of dollars. I know from well-placed sources that the payments were bribes. Among the list of names, some senior FIFA officials. This is real money, massive kickbacks on World Cup contracts. So who got the money? The story starts in the pretty Swiss city of Zug. It was the home of the most successful sports marketing company in the world, International Sport and Leisure, or ISL. For 20 years, FIFA awarded the right to commercially exploit the World Cup to this one company. ISL then sold these rights to some of the biggest global brands, keeping a hefty commission for themselves. <laughs> Top brands paid millions in good faith to put the World Cup logo on their products. Adidas, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, TV networks paid even more to broadcast World Cup matches. It is huge money. It is a billion, billions that can be earned, and uh, all the sports marketing companies, they fight and they want them. So why did ISL always win the fight for the World Cup rights? Roland Bouchel was an ISL account director. When I worked at ISL, we suspected that there was bribes being paid and uh, there were people who knew of course the ones who paid them the details of the bribe started to emerge after ISL went bust in 2001 six ISL managers were eventually taken to court in Zug in 2008 over the misuse of company money Two years ago, I sat in a courtroom here and listened as the secrets of the massive kickback conspiracy began to surface. One ISL executive told investigators that some FIFA leaders had treated his company like a bank. The payments were referred to in court as Schmiergeld, German slang for bribes. But the ISL defendants couldn't be tried for commercial bribery. It wasn't a crime in Switzerland at the time. So the full details have never been revealed until now. The internal ISL documents we've obtained show secret payments of around $100 million. We understand that most of the bribes went to a handful of FIFA bosses. Only one of them was named in the Zug court case. 82-year-old Nicholas Laos, a member of FIFA's executive committee. The boss of South American football was alleged to have taken two bribes totaling $130,000. You might have expected President Blasser to order an immediate investigation. He didn't. Thanks to this secret list of payments we've obtained, never revealed in open court, we can see that Mr. Leo's got a great deal more. The ISL list shows he received three further payments. One of $200,000, another one of 200000 and yet another one. That's a further $600,000 worth of bribes for Mr. Leos. We wrote asking him to explain the payments. He didn't respond, so I tried to catch up with him at a luxury hotel in Zurich. Senor Leos, Senor Leos, did you take bribes from the ISL company? Senor Leos, a usted tomardo sobono de ESL. He'll soon be voting on England's bid, as will another man on our list, Issa Hayatu. He's boss of African football. 
In 2002, he ran against President Blatter on a clean-up FIFA platform. Here he is. Mr. Hayatu is a FIFA vice president representing 53 African countries. The list shows ISL paying him 100,000 French francs. Next to his name it says Barzahlung, German for cash payment. He didn't answer our letter either. This time I got a bit closer. Mr. Hayatu, Andrew Jennings we met before. C could you spare me a moment? No. I'd like to ask no, you about no, no, monies. No. Please, please, We've looked. Please, 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 the ISL please, please, books please. show that you receive money from ISL. Uh, look, that's what the lists say. They say you receive money, sir. But your name is in the books from ISL. Your name is in the books for getting money. That's why I'm asking you. Operate, please. Out. Okay. Yeah. Out. Okay. ISL made the payments on this secret list between 1989 and 1999. But we can't trace many of the people who got the money because it was channeled through companies in secretive Liechtenstein. One of them, Securetta, received 36 payments, a total of almost $50 million. Here's another Liechtenstein company named Sunod. It got 21 payments totaling nine and a half million dollars. This time, there are some clues about who got the money. They point to the most significant person linked to our secret document. He's another member of FIFA's executive committee. And the man in charge of the next World Cup in Brazil in 2014. This is Ricardo Teixeira. Panorama has met him before. In 1998, we tried to ask him about his role in sponsorship deals for Brazil's national team. You don't want to talk about football. Well, I would like to talk about Bye bye. No more <laughs> answers. No more questions. But we've got new questions because that Liechtenstein company, Sanod, has been closely linked to him in the past. An inquiry by the Brazilian Senate in 2001 found that funds from Sanod had been secretly channeled to Mr. Tashira. So did the nine and a half million dollars on our list end up in his pocket as well? We wrote to Mr. Tashira and asked. He didn't reply either. Hello, Mr. Tashira, can we talk to you, please? So I went back to FIFA's hotel in Zurich to ask him. Did you take your bribes through the Sanod company? What were those payments from the ISL company for? Mr. Tashira? Oh, dear. We told the Brazilian senator who led that 2001 inquiry about the ISL payments to Sanod. He said, this is another scandal, a big scandal. Mr. Leos, Mr. Hayatu, and Mr. Tashira. Three FIFA bosses that England's bid team has been lobbying to vote for England in three days' time. The $100 million list. Complete. $100 million. Dollars. I showed the list of payments to Roland Bouchel, former ISL insider and now a Swiss MP. It's, it's, it's incredible. The sum is incredible. And um, I'm surprised that there have been so many payments over such a long period. I think it will be a big sur surprise up in FIFA House. But how much of a surprise? Sepp Blatter's known about the ISL scandal for years. We asked him why FIFA hadn't investigated. He said in a statement, The Zug Criminal Court largely exonerated the managers of ISL, notably in connection with the accusation of paying commissions to sports officials. The ISL managers were largely exonerated, but they weren't cleared of paying commissions or bribes because that's not what they were in court for. Mr. Blatter's statement went on, 
It is important to stress that no FIFA officials were accused of any criminal offence in these proceedings. That's true, but what President Blatter didn't mention was that there was a second criminal investigation into the ISL bribes, and that did involve FIFA officials. That case was only closed in June this year, when some FIFA officials agreed to repay three and a half million pounds they'd received in kickbacks on ISL marketing contracts. This was an out-of-court settlement, and the identities of the accused were kept secret. Yet FIFA still won't investigate. Some think its honest members should stand up and be counted. There are still many people in the executive committee who did not take anything. The pressure from them will be, will have to be big. If not, I, I can't understand what they really want to do with the Federation if they don't act now. David Mello was the head of Tony Blair's football task force. Okay. He saw FIFA at close quarters. I don't understand how in this day and age when everybody is concerned in every other walk of life about accountability and about freedom from even the th suggestion of corruption, let alone the reality of corruption, it, it, it astonishes me that uh, FIFA continues the way that it does. The list of ISL payments isn't the only scandal at FIFA. We've got further evidence about another FIFA boss who will vote on Thursday. A man I've met many times. Mr. Warner, good morning. Welcome to Zurich. Vice President Jack Warner. He controls football in the Caribbean, North and Central America. How much profit did you make selling World Cup tickets this year? In 2006, I asked him about the profits he'd made from selling thousands of tickets for the Germany World Cup. He'd sold them to black market touts, making his company an estimated profit of one million dollars. This is a very, very polite inquiry, Mr. Warner. If you could spit on me, you would spit on me? I will not, of course. Why, why, would, you, why would you spit on me? Because you're garbage. I'm garbage. Three months later, FIFA secretly ordered Jack Warner's family business to make a one million dollar donation to charity to compensate for the profits it had made through the resale of 2006 FIFA World Cup tickets. Thank you so much, Mr. Warner. Thank you. I think that it's almost impossible to think of any other organization where the kind of allegations can be so repeatedly made uh, as have been made against Mr. Warner and that he could survive. And survive he did. This year, and another World Cup in South Africa. And Jack Warner was at it again, ordering $84,000 worth of tickets from FIFA to sell to touts. I caught up with the Norwegian journalist who obtained emails and an invoice revealing Mr. Warner's involvement in ordering the tickets. But was FIFA interested? It's quite strange because this is the second time that Jack Warner has basically been um, caught with his pants down. The Ethics Committee never takes it seriously. It's the Vice President. It's a serious allegation. Well, we have the correspondence between Warner... We've examined their evidence in detail. ...that exact number of tickets which they ordered from Mr. Warner. Although the deal eventually fell through, it's clear Jack Warner has questions to answer. Being banned from FIFA, I couldn't ask them. They could. Jack Warner was involved in the black market ticket trade again. Uh, why hasn't this been in, uh, investigated by FIFA? The uh, Jack Warner case is not a case uh, that we have uh, uh, dealt with. Uh, should it be uh, knowledgeable to us by official uh, means or by uh, official uh, channels, then naturally, uh, then we would have a look on that. Official channels? What does that mean? Would FIFA look at the evidence? So we asked the uh, media office what Mr. Sepp Platter means by official channels. And as I said, we have no idea. Can I, can I ask you how much... Jack Warner is one of FIFA's untouchables. He's always ignored Panorama's questions, 
But he told the press our allegations were a rehash of the same old bullshit and that he continues to sleep very soundly at night. David Beckham has already met him. This week, David Cameron hopes to, in Zurich, to discuss England's bid. Back home, no one wants to talk about the issues we're raising. Two government ministers and the bid team declined our requests for interviews. But one man who supported England's bid for the last government did speak to us. Is it wise to get into a contest where some of the voters on the FIFA Executive Committee are clearly very dubious people and open to corruption? Well, we have to deal with what is in front of us, which is a FIFA Executive Committee that will be making the decision on England's bid for the World Cup. All that we have done is make sure that we've got the best technical bid that's available and try to convince the uh, FIFA executive members that England should be where the World Cup is held in 2018. Logic has to be suspended. Normal standards of integrity and honesty have to be suspended. We have to uh, go in on our knees to accept FIFA diktats, crawl on our bellies to beg them to give us the World Cup. <laughs> Why don't our politicians and football leaders ask questions about the men around this table? We would be honoured to host the 2018 FIFA World Cup. Why? We love football. It's our national sport. It's not just the fans who think it's a prize worth winning. It's a matter of national pride. England is ready willing and able to deliver the best World Cup ever. To help sell us the dream, we've been promised it will bring jobs and lots of money. But just how much money and on whose terms? Fans are predicted to spend over £5 billion, with 3 million international visitors contributing over £3 billion to the UK economy. Sounds great. But how can we know how much the World Cup will bring us when even the government admits it hasn't yet worked out all the costs? Here in Holland, they're also bidding. The Dutch government has calculated the costs. Rather than a financial bonanza, their report predicts an overall loss of 150 million euros. There's something else the Dutch people know that we don't. Details of the guarantees FIFA demands from governments who want the World Cup. FIFA insists they're kept secret. They say that's common business practice. But the Dutch decided to publish them. There are eight guarantees FIFA insists all governments have to sign. Visa rules are thrown out of the window. Workers' rights suspended and new laws may be needed to protect FIFA's official sponsors. It's all too much for some here. As a government, you make laws for everybody, for every situation. You're not going to make laws for just one situation, and that one situation is the World Cup. You're not make laws to protect one organization. You don't do that. The demands help guarantee FIFA's financial return more than three billion dollars from the last World Cup. Most startling of all, FIFA's demands on tax. They want to create their own tax haven. A full exempt situation. It is FIFA and its FIFA subsidiaries that are fully exempt from any tax whatsoever levied at whatever level, state level, municipality level, all sorts of taxes, consumption taxes, income taxes, you name it, it's all exempt. There are also tax breaks for FIFA's official sponsors. The Dutch have calculated that if they win the bid, FIFA's tax demands could amount to 300 million euros. FIFA says the guarantees are reasonable. They are a not-for-profit organization which funds the development of football and that the FIFA World Cup is FIFA's only source of income. FIFA wants all bidders to sign up to its demands. The Dutch watered some of them down and got a very stiff letter from FIFA. They were putting their hopes of hosting the World Cup in jeopardy. In the UK, even Parliament hasn't seen the guarantees. 
One senior parliamentarian wanted to know about the FIFA tax breaks, but was told the guarantees were confidential. So we showed him the ones published in Holland. Now you've seen the guarantees, what do you think of them? It is just indefensible. I mean, that's the word for it. It is indefensible, and it's an insult to taxpayers in this country. These are demands. You sign up here, or otherwise your bid will be likely to be regarded as deficient. They have the audacity to uh, seek to instruct the Parliament that they'll dance to the FIFA tune. Some people see the guarantees as being onerous. My view was that um, the benefits uh, to having the competition far outweigh the disbenefits. The gun guarantees that FIFA demanded are similar to what other international bodies do in terms of the Olympics, uh, other international competitions that we wanted to host. And it's important that we sign up to these guarantees on the basis of the bid being able to be successful. The British government signed the guarantees. They're in the bid book. But we understand that they have raised concerns with FIFA about their demands on tax, visas, security and labour laws. We present you with uh, our bid book for 2018. The hope is that if we get the tournament, we can renegotiate. I wonder what Seth Blatter will make of that. I understand why people want the World Cup. We invented football. Why shouldn't we have the World Cup finals? But I can't help feeling it would be a better role for England to actually be insisting on the reform of FIFA, making FIFA transparent, making FIFA accountable. With only three days left before the vote, Will President Sepp Blatter take action against the three men we've shown to have taken bribes? It seems unlikely. We've been told President Blatter has known about one ISL bribe for 13 years and has done nothing. This is former FIFA President Jao Havelange. Four years ago, I reported how a huge payment intended for him had ended up in FIFA's bank account by mistake. Witnesses said there was panic when a bank statement listing the payment landed on the desk of then FIFA General Secretary Sepp Blatter. I'm told you ordered this bribe should be moved to the man who paid on the payment. Can you tell me who it went to? Was it President, President Havelange? We've never been given an answer. But does it lie in our secret list of payments? One entry stands out. Guarantee JH. Jao Havelange's initials. Next to a payment of one and a half million Swiss francs. A million dollars. We wrote to both honorary FIFA president Havelange and Sepp Blatter about this bribe. Mr. Havelange didn't respond and Mr. Blatter again referred us to the 2008 court case in Zug. But if FIFA won't reveal the truth, isn't it high time the politicians forced them? Andrew, we are not speaking about sports, we speak about corruption. And politics can't be kept out of that. After decades of corruption, we need now an external, an international, and an independent investigation into the FIFA books. Far more important than anything else in world football is to get a FIFA that is clean and fit for purpose. We don't have that at the moment. Andrew Jennings reporting there. And as we heard, the Prime Minister and the England 2018 bid team are due to lobby FIFA's executive committee members in Zurich tomorrow. Now, the bid team has already written to the committee members expressing solidarity with them. We'll find out in three days' time if England has won the bid.